So welcome to the session today, today's uh, training on the T's. Um, and this session we're going to go over some big data automation uh, using HD Insight. I like to call this uh, session Get Up and Go um, because that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to jump up and just and go in head first. So a little bit about the session. It's going to be obviously an hour. Um, interaction is encouraged. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat window as best as I can or any questions or anything like that um, to answer them as we go. But please do ask questions. Um, and at the end of the session, I will put out a blog post. Um, and I'll work with Liz to try and get it disseminated out. Um, that will have all the scripts um, that we cover in this session actually um, given out to you so that you're put out so that you can download them. Um, and use them in your own your own area, your own environment. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Josh Ludeman. I'm a business intelligence consultant here at Pragmatic Works. Um, I've been working in IT for over 10 years, um, multitude of roles. Basically, worked myself um, up from application support all the way to um, business intelligence consulting, where I am today. Um, in a multitude of industries, um, that's just uh, the, some of the more popular ones I've worked in. Um, you know, higher education, manufacturing, software development, um, just to name a few. Um, multitude of experience. You can reach me on Twitter, at Josh Ludeman. I'm trying to figure out a new Twitter name to make something a little bit easier to spell than my last name, which isn't, you know, obviously the most fun. Um, I blog at joshludeman.com, and you can reach me at my email address at here, pragmaticworks.com. So a little bit about what we're going to cover. Um, I'll basically cover a little bit about HD Insight and what it is um, so that we can all start on a level playing field. Um, I'll even give a quick little blurb about what Hadoop is. Um, some of the prerequisites you're going to need to do some of the automation we'll go over today. Um, some of the other deployment options besides Azure um, or even within Azure and other cloud options. Um, what are the development or deployment options for HD Insight? How does it all work together? Um, we'll cover PowerShell and HD Insight and how they kind of how you can use PowerShell to interact with HD Insight. We'll go with an automated deployment um, and a full HD Insight automation. Now the difference between the two, automated deployment, I'll give you a script, it'll go out, you know, we'll go over a script where you just run the script, it goes out, it stands up the cluster, um, it can run a query and it can remove the cluster. Um, or we'll do a full HD Insight automation and I'll go over a script that runs off of a config XML file um, that you can actually use to deploy um, depending on that config file. So it's, it's uh, fully configurable. Um, what kind of cluster you want to deploy. It'll also give you the option to configure um, whether or not you have a meta store with that cluster um, and then remove the cluster at the end of running some kind of script. Maybe you have a hive script you want to run um, or some kind of export script, something along those lines. Um, that would then be able to um, do this for a full automated solution. So before we get started, just in case there's some out there who maybe don't understand what Hadoop is, um, Hadoop is a distributed file system. It's designed to be run on a cluster. You can run it on a single node, um, but it isn't necessarily something I'd recommend. Um, it's not going to give you the full power um, because the idea behind, this, uh, behind Hadoop is distributed, um, distributing your data across, across the cluster and the computing power or the computing needs um, for your requests um, distributed throughout the cluster. Um, it's designed to use commodity hardware, but obviously, um, like anything else in this world, um, you'll get out of it what you put into it. Um, obviously, it can run on commodity hardware, you know, just like it says and since it's come out. Um, but if you put nicer, um, harder, you know, faster, um, bigger hardware into it, um, the, salute, the Hadoop cluster will run better. Um, so what it does is it, it actually takes the data and distributes it out through the cluster and through the nodes within the cluster. So um, say if you have three racks, five nodes per rack, um, you will have your data in um, three different, or in each cluster, or in each rack distributed along the five servers in that rack and possibly 
uh, multiple, most likely multiple times within that rack, within each rack. So inevitably you could have maybe six copies of your data in that cluster. It's also going to distribute the, proce uh, the processing load throughout the cluster. There's a head node on the cluster, and then there are, again, worker nodes that actually store and um, process the requests that are made to the cluster. So at that point, the head node kind of is the hall monitor. If you think about it, or if you have children in grade school, it's the hall monitor in the, in the, uh, in the halls of the grade school, telling you know, the kids to kind of, hey, you know, kind of organize the chaos of it all. And that would be what a head node does. Um, it's a top-level um, open source project um, under Apache. Um, there's also other projects underneath it for different uses. There's Mahout, Hive, Pig, Spark, just to name a few. Um, Hive is more of like the relational um, kind of database layer that you can put over top of your data um, that introduces a uh, environment similar to what we um, use in querying in SQL Server. Um, so that you can put an overlay of a table structure over top of your data files to kind of make it easier to um, navigate the data within the files. Um, and what Hadoop does is with all these great tools, um, and because it's a file system, it opens the door for processing non-traditional data sources. So when I say that, most of us usually think of a data source as it, there's a server and a database. Now whether that server could be MySQL, could be Oracle, Postgres, whatever, you know, um, flat files even, a lot of people consider a data source, um, SSIS obviously, um, using, a, using a flat file as a data source of some kind. Um, but non-traditional data sources, um, and I won't, use the, I won't use the term unstructured data, it's semi-structured data, maybe a Word document of some kind, um, maybe it's web logs. So there's some kind of structure to it. It's not necessarily um, comma delimited. It's not tab delimited. Um, or really delimited in any fashion, any stru very structured fashion, highly structured fashion. Um, but what it is, it is files, maybe you have a Word document that's um, a report. Um, and your reports usually have five sections, or always have five sections, and there's always an introduction, there's always a concluding section, a summary section, and then there's three sections in between that are always the same type. Um, so in that way you could use Hadoop and some of these other processing tools like maybe Pig um, or even Python um, to, or Java, I mean, to distribute the work that maybe help you read those documents. So the